Hi everybody, welcome to Day 9, Section 7-7, Solving Radical Equations. Today we are going to talk about solving square root and cube root functions. Um, and there might even be some fourth root functions thrown in. Okay, so here are the following steps we need to do in order to solve radical equations. Step number one is we need to isolate the radical on one side of the equation. Okay? Step two, after we isolate, we raise each side of the equation to a power equal to the index. So we have to be able to identify what the index is. Step three, if there are any remaining radicals, we repeat these steps all over again. All right, and then we will solve the resulting equation, and final step is always, always, always check your solution to make sure that we don't have any extraneous solutions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first couple of examples here. Okay, first thing I want to note is um, we changed this first example. So take a look at the equation that is on your notes. Um, we originally had our notes as 8 plus the square root of x plus 1 equals 2, but we changed it. So cross that off and write the new one here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so first step in solving these radical equations is to isolate the radical on one side. So if we take a look, the square root of x plus 1 is not isolated. We have this 2 here with it. So our first step would be to subtract the 2 from both sides. When we do that, we're going to have the square root, oops, the square root of x plus 1 equals 6. Okay, now that we have the radical isolated, we take a look and we raise each side of the equation to the power equal to the index. Well, remember, if the index is not written in, what is our index? And you should recognize, hey, it's a 2. So we are going to square both sides of the equation. And I like to put parentheses around everything just to make sure um, we're doing everything correctly. So the left side, the square root of x plus 1 squared, those cancel out and leave us just with x plus 1. Okay, 6 squared we should know is 36. And now we go ahead and solve and we should get x to be 35. But before we go ahead and box this as our answer, we always, always, always need to check and verify. Okay, so we always need to go through this process. We want to check, does x really equal 35? Does it hold a true statement? So we always check in the original problem. So 2 plus the square root of 35 plus 1. Does that equal 8? That's what we're testing, okay? So we get 2 plus the square root of 36. Still testing if that equals 8. That gives us 2 plus 6. Does that equal 8? And we should see in the end we get 8 equals 8. So, true statement. All right, so we can go ahead and box this answer. X does, in fact, equal 35. It works out. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our second example here. All right? What we should notice this time is we've got a couple radicals here. Okay? So step one says isolate the radical on one side of, an equa of the equation. Well, when you have multiple radicals in one equation, you choose one to isolate first. So if we take a look here, we're already isolated. 
So now we can go ahead and raise both sides of the equation equal to the index of that radical. Well, our index of this guy is a 2. All right, so we will raise both sides to the second power. And in this case, it's really important to use parentheses around that right side. Okay, so um, let's just make a quick little side note about what this will be. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do a, a quick side note right underneath. The square root of 5x minus 1 squared is like saying the square root of 5x minus 1 times the square root of 5x minus 1. Okay, so when we multiply this out, the square root of 5x times the square root of 5x simply gives us 5x. Okay, the square root of 5x times negative 1 is going to give us minus the square root of 5x. Then we have negative 1 times the square root of 5x, so we've got another minus the square root of 5x. And then finally, negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give us plus, plus 1. Okay, so just cleaning everything up, we end up with 5x plus 1. And then how many square roots of 5x's do we have? We have minus... 2 square root of 5x. Okay, so when we square that right side, that's the quantity that we're going to have. So let's go back to our equation. We square both sides. The left side becomes 3x plus 1. The right side, when we square the square root of 5x minus 1, we are left with 5x plus 1 minus 2 root 5x. Okay, so what we should notice is we still have a radical in our equation. So we have to repeat steps 1 through 3 again. So we have to isolate the square root of 5x. So the first thing we can do is if we um, notice these ones will cancel each other, I, if I bring that 5x over to the other side, we will be left with minus 2x equals negative 2 times the square root of 5x. Okay, we're still not quite isolated. We have this negative 2 coefficient. So now we can divide both sides by negative 2. And when we divide that left side by negative 2, we're just left with x equals the square root of 5x. Okay. So now we are completely isolated. We're ready to go ahead and raise both sides equal to what our index is. And again, our index isn't written in, so it's a 2. So we are going to raise both sides to the second power. And hopefully, this time, all of the radicals go away. So the left side becomes x squared. The right side, the radical goes away, and we are just left with 5x. So what we've got here is a quadratic equation, and we all know that when we're solving the quadratic, we need to set it equal to zero. So we're going to bring everything over to that one side. So x squared minus 5x equals zero. And when we're solving a quadratic equation, first thing we try to do, if we can, is factor. So how could we factor x squared minus 5x? We should recognize we can have a GCF of x, leaving us with x minus 5 equals 0. Zero product property, we get two answers, x equals 0 or x equals 5. Okay, but we can't conclude that this is our final answer until we verify it by checking our work. So we need to check both situations. The first one we can check is when x equals 0. And we go back to the original equation. So we have the square root of 3 times 0 plus 1. Is that equal to the square root of 5 times 0 
minus 1. Okay, so what the left side simplifies to, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. Okay, square root of 5 times 0, well 5 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 1 is minus 1. So does positive 1 equal negative 1? No. Okay, so that doesn't work. So right off the bat, I'm going to throw x equals 0 out. It's an extraneous solution. Okay, but now I need to check that x equals 5 works or it doesn't. Okay, so we have to verify. So we get the square root of 3 times 5 plus 1. Does that equal the square root of 5 times 5 minus 1? Okay, well 3 times 5 plus 1 is the square root of 16. 5 times 5 is 25, so we get the square root of 25 minus 1. And the left side becomes 4, the right side 5 minus 1. And what we should notice is we get a true statement of 4 does in fact equal 4. So this checks out, so our final answer is only x equals 5. Okay? So you have to verify your work every single time. Alright, so finally this last example here. Solve the following equation. The quantity 2x plus 3 raised to the 1 third equals 2. Well, knowing what we know with this rational exponent, another way we could write 2x plus 3 raised to the 1 third power is in radical notation. So if it helps you, we go ahead and do that. And remember the index is the denominator of our rational exponent, so it's 3. So it's the cubed root of 2x plus 3 equals 2. This time, raising both sides equal to the index. Our index this time is 3, so we're going to cube both sides. All right. The left side simply becomes 2x plus 3. The right side, 2 to the third power. We should all know this by now, and it's 8. And now when we solve it, we subtract 3 from both sides. So 2x equals 5, so x is equal to 5 halves. But again, we always, always, always check our work. So let's go ahead and check to make sure. And we check in the original, 2 times 5 halves plus 3 raised to the 1 third. Does that equal 2? Well, let's see. 2 times 5 halves, the 2's cancel, we're left with 5 plus 3 to the 1 third. Does that equal 2? Well, that's 8 to the 1 third, which is saying the cubed root of 8. Remember, that's our index, the cubed root of 8. So we do get a true statement. 2 is equal to 2. And we can go ahead and circle our final answer. Okay? So let's go on to the next page, and you can try a few on your own. Okay, so these last examples here, uh, I want you to try on your own. Okay? So go ahead, stop the video and solve both of these equations. Don't forget to check your answer and check back with me when you are done. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, there is one change I want you to make before we begin, and that comes from this equation here. We need to change this. Let's zoom in a little bit. I want you to change this to an X. Um, plus 4, okay? 
All right, so go ahead, try these two examples, and then uh, we'll come back. All right, so hopefully you had a chance to try these two examples. Um, what you should have gotten in example four was you should have gotten uh, x to equal three, and after checking your work, it checks out, okay? Um, if you question that, if you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow. On this example five, the key here, now our index was a four, so you ended up having to raise both sides to the fourth power after you isolate. And what you should have gotten was x equals negative 15 sevenths. But when you check your answer, this doesn't work. So your final answer should be no solution. Okay, so like I said, if you have any questions on this stuff, make sure you come to class um, with those tomorrow. Other than that, have a great night, everybody. See you later.